Hello everyone and welcome to Tuesday. I really didn't think that we would be having late dinner back to back because mm -hmm. we did last night mm -hmm. and now we are tonight again, mm -hmm. but we're having um, the leftovers and they look great. They look absolutely great. Um, but basically, uh, today has been kind of wild. Um, we had to, we had to take care of quite a few things. We actually ate lunch very late and then um, Today I was doing a first 20 stream, which always runs long, and I, I basically told him ahead of time, I was like, I know that I'm going to get started later than I want, because setting up always is always harder than I think it'll be. Um, and it's just because even though I've done it before, moving the equipment around and changing how it's set up is just a pain. It's a huge pain. So I had to do that, and I had to pick, pick out which games and stuff we were going to play. Um, so I went through all of that, and by the time I got started and then went through the four games that we played, it was late. But we, we kind of knew that and prepared for that early. So um, the entire time I was doing the first 20 stream, I was painting. So you get a lot of painting done, which is good. I painted a long time, but it doesn't look like I did much. Well, it's a... Uh, might be... Might, the painting might have been harder than we thought. Yeah. Not harder. No. More time consuming. Yes. But um, anyway, last month when I did the first 20 stream, I talked about the games and people seemed to really enjoy that. So I'm going to do that again right after I eat this because I'm, I'm starving. I stinker. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. So, um, I decided I would, uh, kind of do this in the exact same format as I did last month. Um, something's missing. But I wanted to talk about the, the the games that I played today because, you know, that's that's important to me. Um, I started by playing the uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake. And my god, it's real good. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's different than the original. Like, the, um, the gameplay mechanics are different. Because, I mean, Final Fantasy VII wasn't a traditional turn-based RPG. I mean, it, it could be. That was a setting that you could enable at the start. But, you know, it had the, the time-based system where you're waiting for your meter to fill to attack. But this is... This feels more like Kingdom Hearts, in a way. And I think for some people, they they may not like that. But also, because they didn't play Final Fantasy VII in a very strict turn-based environment, I don't think a lot of people are going to care, honestly. Because there was that, you know, that system of uh, waiting for the timer bar to fill in Final Fantasy VII, um, I don't think it's actually going to matter too much. Um, it does feel, in some degree, a, a little bit more like an action game, and that could turn off some people. But I actually liked it a lot, and um, I've never, I've never finished Final Fantasy VII, but I've played um, <laughs> basically the equivalent of the first disc, like multiple times. Never beat the stupid thing, and one day I hope to actually do it. But um, playing it tonight was was really really fun. It was actually really enjoyable. And I think that people who are nostalgic for the game will love it. And I think that people who didn't play the original but have obviously heard so much about it because it's so frequently on, you know, the best game of all time list, uh, the best RPG of all time. Uh, it, quite frequently it, it's at the top of the, those lists. And I think a lot of people that are interested in trying the game because of that will actually still really enjoy themselves. But if you have nostalgia for it, I mean, I only I, I played the demo, which is an hour long, and I had some extreme nostalgia for it as well, and I've never even finished the game. So, um, yeah, I, I have a feeling that that game will sell very well. And, uh, I mean, just based on what I've seen so far, it probably deserves it. Because it was, it was very fun. And, Honestly, I kind of, kind of like the action elements of it. Um, adds like a new, 
just a completely new feel to the game, uh, and one that I think is uh, actually quite enjoyable. Uh, second game that we played this evening was uh, Bug Fables, and Bug Fables makes it very clear at the beginning of what it's trying to accomplish. It is Paper Mario. And it just is. Like, every single thing is trying to be Paper Mario. Like, the style of dialogue, the UI, the, uh, just the art direction is, is a direct lift from the Paper Mario series. Um, everything about the game is just screaming Paper Mario at you. Now here's the good news. It's good. It's really good. Like if you like Thousand Year Door, you should you should play Bug Fables. You should absolutely play Bug Fables because it's got the exact same thing going for it. And if you've been waiting for a Paper Mario game that feels more like Thousand Year Door, it's Bug Fables. And you should probably you should probably try it out. It's one of those imitation is the best form of flattery things. And it's definitely imitating a lot, but at the same time, it's also leaving behind the worst parts of Paper Mario and carrying forward only the best parts, and also introducing some new ideas to it as well. So, do I feel like it stands on its own? Yes. But when you first see it, or first play it, you're going to be like, oh, you are screaming Paper Mario at me. And it is. Like, it, it absolutely, unapologetically is. Um, but again, so many people love the Paper Mario series, and very specifically, they love Thousand Year Door, and I'm just here to tell you, you should play Bug Fables. You should probably really enjoy it. And at the very least, if you're like, oh, I just want to check it out, well, I'll have a first 20 out <laughs> soon. So you'll be able to watch it and, uh, you know, decide from there. But, uh, I, I played it for an hour, which was more than I'm obligated to play it and uh, I was having a really good time with it. The third game that we played was Eliza, and Eliza is a visual novel that is set in Seattle, Washington, and is all about an AI company that is supposed to be doing mental health counseling and the tone of it is serious and also extremely heavy. Um, just to give like a, a very quick rundown here, uh, you are starting a new job at this, this, this tech firm and the way they have their offices set up is they're small, almost cafes and people come in to get mental health counseling and the whole shtick of the company that you work for is that there's an AI that's doing all of the answers, but you as a person work there because you have this helmet on and are getting all the responses from the AI based on the person you're interacting with, but it's a human element. And that's why your company is better than some of the other companies because the other companies are basically just chatbots. Um, but with you being a physical like human person there, the other person feels more at ease. And uh, so, you know, we got started on the game and the first person that comes in is talking about, I mean, they're just very textbook depressed, very, very depressed. And it was hard. It was, it was a hard play because it's written extremely well, extremely authentic. The voice acting is ex extremely good and it feels real. And I know that there was a few people in chat I could see that, that they were like, I cannot be here for this because it's heavy. It gets really heavy and I, and I can definitely see that hitting very close to home for a lot of people. Um, yeah, and to some extent, for some times, especially in the past year or so, maybe even myself, it's, it's a little rough. It's a little rough. That being said, it gave me a, a feeling that was very reminiscent of Papers, Please, because we and we didn't get very far into it, but we got far enough into it to see that it was going to be you as a person 
versus your job, you know, your the AI telling you what to do. So you're going to have to be making choices about do you deviate from the script that the AI is trying to get you to tell this person and talk to them as a person. And um, it reminded me a lot of Papers, Please, because in Papers, Please, you're, you're forced to do basically the same thing where you've got to check passports. You've got to make these tough decisions about whether to let someone into a country or not. And sometimes, you know, are you going to let someone slide? Um, it, it felt very similar to that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a game that not everyone could handle, and I totally understand that. But it was fascinating, and it was interesting to see a game that tackled that subject matter in such a very serious and authentic way and um it's uh possibly something you should check out it's not for everybody but uh that's another first 20 that's that's coming soon and then the final game that we played was a uh a game called 1980x and it's a coming of age story that has probably some of the most beautiful pixel art i've ever seen in a game period i mean it's just incredible and um, it's got this this really wonderful voiceover narration, and it's about a kid growing up in the 80s who feels, you know, just, just kind of going through life um, a little lost, uh, not really sure where their place in the world is, how they belong, and then they stumble across a arcade, and they get really sucked into these games, and that's like the story and it's being told with all of this, you know, great narration and uh, pixel art. And then, when you get to the arcade segments, the games are playable. So it's like these games that are in the style of, you know, famous uh, 1980s video games, arcade games, and you get to play them. And it's it's just really, really well done. It it seems to me like the game would probably be pretty short. I don't know that for certain, but. That's kind of the feeling that I got, but it's still really cool. And uh, I really liked how they portrayed everything. It's just bleeding 80s. Like the music is so spot on for what it needs to be. And the pixel art is so good just in the cinematics, let alone when you're actually playing the games and everything is just spot on. And during the credit sequence, they were showing like the list of artists and it was a huge list. And I'm like, well, that makes sense because, you know, the game's beautiful. But, uh, yeah, last month I think we played five games. And this month we just played four. But it was already late and I was like, we should we should wrap it up because it was, I think, 11.30. And that's whenever we had dinner. So now I've had dinner and I've talked about the games I played in March. And now you know. And things are covered until... Um, the beginning of April. In the beginning of April, I'll do another First 20 stream, and I'll probably do another video like this, if you guys are interested. Um, I, it's so weird to be here. I mean, this is not like a, a normal spot, but this is the way I recorded it last month, and um, it stuck out of my head. I just remember sitting here and starting to talk and Sagan was right here over my shoulder and he's still got he's still got cat hair here I mean it's just it's all over the place and um, I don't know that train of thought doesn't necessarily have to go anywhere sometimes it doesn't just to throw some stuff here at the end now that I've already talked about the meat and potatoes of, of what this video is, which is my experiences with these games. All the games are great, worth playing. Um, and I'm excited for those to come out on YouTube so you guys can experience them. Um, of course, we archive everything on Twitch, so if you want to watch it sooner, you can. You can watch it on Twitch, but it'll be edited down and released on you know Fridays throughout March. Um, we haven't been talking too much about Sagan lately. Um, but I can promise you that we've been thinking about him a lot. And um, Mal and I have been talking about him a good bit. 
one of the things that we had said within the first week or so after he passed is, um, you know, grief is not linear and it's, it's not. And, uh, it's really interesting. You might have a day or two where you're just fine. And then something happens, something sets it off and it's just bam. And, uh, Mao had a day like that a few days ago, and then I had a day like that yesterday. And then uh, Mao had some stuff that happened today, too. So it's just like, there's always these, these little things. Um, it's just, you know, he's still in our mind a lot. And uh, it hasn't even been three weeks. Thursday. Thursday will make three weeks, and it's been rough. We're keeping a good eye on uh, on him. Trying to make sure he's happy. <laughs> he's so cute. One of the interesting things, and again, I'm not trying to bring this whole vlog down or anything. That's why I wanted to talk about this at the end, after all the video, video game stuff was done. So if people just wanted to hear that, they could leave. And they wouldn't feel guilty. <laughs> um, one of the... He's, he's done really well. Cap's done really well. Um... When I have to record up here, um, and I close the door, I've been leaving it open all other times. But when I when I record up here for, to do Morning Mario or to do like the first twenty stream, I've been closing the door. And when I'm done and I open the door, Kep is asleep on the stairs waiting on me. And when I open the door, he just immediately meow meow meow, and he never. Never really did that. Um, I, I think it's just because he always had Sagan, and I mean he's been he's been my little buddy, and he just wants to lay on me and um, cuddle with me, and I, I love that. I love spending time with him, but um, you know I, I, I want to stress that he I really truly feel like he's actually been taking everything pretty well, um, which is good. I don't really see any signs of depression or anything. His appetite's been good and things like that but it is clear in certain at certain times that you know if he's alone you know if I'm up here and I, I have to the door shut so I keep the peace and everything um, and if he doesn't want to go hang out with Mal that he I think he is lonely because th these are times where he would spend it with Sagan and obviously he doesn't have Sagan now so and Mal and I've been a little concerned with you know when we're not at home how is he doing? We're, we're not entirely sure, but he spends a whole lot of time with us when he's when we're here. Don't you, bud? Huh? He's precious. Anyway, all right. I'm going to go ahead and uh, end it here. Thank you for listening. Um, first Johnny's will be coming out every Friday throughout uh, March and um, we continue to you know push ahead and try and get stuff done and um, I, I, I still I, I gotta tell you um, I, I know I've said this before but having vlogs caught up has just been such a weight lifted off of me mentally it's very hard to put into words how beneficial it has been I mean it has been night and day difference for me it's been very helpful and I feel like I can breathe again for the first time in a long time still lots of other stuff to do and I know that this is just kind of the first part of it but man it's made a big difference I'm really happy about that okay I gotta go to bed you too you gotta come downstairs you gotta sleep on the bed thanks for watching and as always, let's meet back tomorrow, shall we?